Our guides are driving us from Liwa North to Samburu National Reserve. The reserve encompasses over 40,000 acres. It's located on the Ureso Nero River. Our next three nights will be spent in the elephant's bedroom. We arrive just in time for lunch by the river. Our tents are close by. I think these accommodations will suit us just fine. The view of the river and the savannah beyond from our porch. We have a little downtime before an afternoon game drive. In 1948, this area was protected as part of a much larger reserve. In 1962, the area became Samburu Game Reserve, and in 1985, it was elevated to National Reserve. The Uasu Nehru River flows along the southern border of the reserve, and it's a life-giving force for the plants, animals, and people. The riverbanks host riverine forests of acacia, Beyond the river, the land becomes a dry and arid grassland dotted with low acacia bushes. This area has been the home to the semi-pneumatic herders of the Samburu tribe for hundreds of years. We're visiting the Samburu people. The women of the village welcome us. The village chief welcomes us and explains the origin of his people. He says, over 500 years ago, there was a great famine and only two brothers survived. They traveled south to this land and found wives from the local tribes. One brother stayed here and his descendants became Samburu. The other traveled south and his descendants became Maasai. Joseph, a village elder, gives us a tour of his village. He explains that they herd cattle and some sheep and goats. Joseph invites us into his home and shows us how they make yogurt. This is a good So if we need a soy milk, so what we do, early in the morning, we make sure we put the milk here, then we close it. So if the lid does not fix enough, like this one now, we use a piece of rag, like this one here, mm. to make sure it's very, very tight. No air comes out. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we need to sit the sun for about seven hours. Then from there, we go and shake it, then we get yogurt. <laughs> Some of the young men show us how they start a fire with friction and dried dung. So from there now, they're going to blow it into form of flame. Joseph introduces us to another important elder, the blacksmith, who shows us how he makes spear points. Then a little souvenir shopping and some pictures with the kids. The village women sing a farewell song and we head back to camp for lunch. In Samburu, there are two kinds of animals, the predator and the prey. A drought in Samburu is in its third year and many of the large predators have moved on. We saw this lioness and her cubs on the road. She was hunting alone with cubs in tow, very unusual. And the cubs didn't look very happy. The good news is we saw them the next morning. They looked much more at ease. They'd probably had a good meal last night. We saw several jackals, but no cheetah and only one leopard from a distance. But the crocodiles by the river seemed unaffected by the drought. The lack of large predators is having a profound impact on at least one species, the dick dick. Normally, these tiny antelope are shy and elusive, but here they're relaxed and very easy to spot. Impalas also seem to be having a population explosion. There are two animals here that are well adapted to this harsh environment, drought or not, the giraffe and the geranook. These are the reticulated giraffes, like we saw in Liwa. They have evolved to reach the tender new shoots at the top of the tree, where no other animal can reach. The giraffe eats around 75 pounds of foliage a day. But the giraffe requires less food than other herbivores, like the elephant. 
because the foliage it eats has more nutrients and the giraffe has a more efficient digestive system. The Gerenuk, or giraffe gazelle, has followed a similar evolutionary strategy. Not only does its long neck allow it to reach higher than other browsers, it can stand on its hind legs and pull down branches with its front legs to extend the reach even higher. It likes the same acacias favored by the giraffe, but it concentrates on the middle story below what the giraffe can reach. In Samburu, the elephants seem to be doing very well. Maybe in part because of the lack of lions, which will attack baby elephants. and there seem to be a lot of little ones around. Elephants require over 50 gallons of water per day, so they stay near the river. They eat an average of 500 pounds of vegetation daily. Samburu is also home to the Grevy zebra. They have an interesting behavior. They queue up behind a leader and follow in single file. Oryx are here too, and seem to be doing very well without predators. Now we can look at the small stuff. Chameleons and lizards are happy in this semi-arid environment. Predator or prey holds true for birds too. The tawny eagle hunts for reptiles and birds up to the size of guinea fowl. This kite likes large insects, lizards, and rodents. These cute little shrikes are called butcher birds for their practice of impaling their prey on acacia thorn. In the savanna, weaver birds' nests hang from trees like Christmas tree ornaments. At the edge of the woodland are the ground foragers. In a tree overhanging the water, you'll find the kingfishers and the bee eaters. Up in the woodland trees are some of the same birds we saw in Liwa. And there are some new ones. And before we know it, it's our last Samburu sunset. In the morning, the elephants come out to say goodbye. Even the Dik Diks and the Garanuk are out. As we turn a corner, there she is, the queen of Samburu. Then on to the airstrip and our next adventure in the Mara. <laughs>